Hello everyone, Ryan Jackson here, hoping that you're all doing as well as you possibly can be. We're going to talk more about the 2020 code changes today. We haven't done a video like that for a while, so I thought we'd jump back into that series. But before I do, if you haven't already, take a minute and subscribe to my channel if you like my content. Hit the bell so you get notified when I upload new material. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for your time. Okay, so 250.68 talks about grounding electrode conductor and bonding jumper connections to electrodes. And the change here is the requirements and, and really the limitations for using rebar as a connection point were expanded. Okay, so 250.68C is the section that we're talking about, connections. And it says grounding electrode conductors and bonding jumpers can connect at any of the following locations which are considered an extension of the electrode. All right, so what we're looking at here is a grounding electrode conductor going down to the clamp and clamping onto a piece of rebar. Now, here's what's important. That is not a grounding electrode. Looking at that photograph, we cannot see a grounding electrode in this picture. All we can see is a piece of rebar. The portion that's in the concrete is the grounding electrode. All right, so we haven't really made a connection to the grounding electrode in this photograph, and that's what we're trying to clarify. We're connecting to an object which is considered what? An extension of the electrode. It's similar to when we have a piece of underground metal water pipe. When we have underground metal water pipe that's 10 feet or more in the dirt, if we go back to section 250.52A1, we learn that that is a grounding electrode. But when's the last time, well, really, when's the last time you saw copper water pipe underground, but when's the last time that you actually made a connection to the water pipe in the dirt? Probably never. I, I know I certainly never did, and I never saw it as an inspector. So we don't really connect to the grounding electrode that's the water pipe, because the grounding electrode is in the dirt. But this section says, well, we can connect to the above ground portion of the water pipe, and kind of use that as a connection point to the underground portion. So same concept here in the photograph. 250.52A1 recognizes that metal water piping can be a grounding electrode, but only the part that's in the dirt. So can we connect to it up here? That's the business of 250.68C. So it says interior metal water piping that's continuous to the underground water pipe electrode and is within five feet of its point of entrance can be used to extend the connection to the electrode. All right, so looking at the photograph here, again, nothing that is visible is a grounding electrode because the grounding electrode is in the dirt. But we're going to let you go ahead and connect to the above ground portion as long as it's within five feet of where the water pipe enters the building. Now, why do we have to do it within five feet? Why can't we do it in the middle of the building? Well, it's simple. We don't trust plumbers, and you shouldn't trust plumbers, right? They're evil people. That's why they're not electricians. So we don't trust plumbers because we're concerned that at some point they very well might cut out a chunk of copper and replace it with a piece of plastic. Nothing against plumbers, but, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's easier and cheaper to use plastic than it is to use copper. So we're going to assume that that's going to happen. So the likelihood of that occurring within five feet of where it enters the building is much less than the likelihood of it happening if I connect to the other side. If I were to connect under the kitchen sink, if a plumber came by and took out any chunk of copper and replaced it with plastic, I've lost the grounding path, haven't I? And I've lost the bonding path, so if it ever became energized, it wouldn't initiate the overcurrent device. So we have to connect to it within five feet of where it enters the building. And that's been the case since the uh, 1990s. We have the same concept when it comes to structural metal. 250.68C2 says, listen, the structural metal in a building is not a grounding electrode. The part that's in the dirt, if there even is a part in the dirt, that's the electrode. So you could connect a wire to the underground portion of the structural metal. Again, it would be pretty unusual. What we would do instead is just connect to it above ground because 250.68C2 recognizes that the structural metal frame can be used to interconnect electrodes together. So I can connect to the structural metal of the building, and then I could walk 500 feet, connect to it again, and jump down to pick up my water pipe. Does that make sense? So you're using the structural metal as a grounding electrode, uh, as a grounding electrode conductor, pardon me. 
the change here is that we used to be able to do that with rebar as well. So let's take a look at 250.68C3. The rebar of a concrete encased electrode can extend out of the concrete to an accessible location that's not subject to corrosion if, and now we've got some caveats. So looking at this picture here, this is something that you would see in pretty much every house, new construction in my area. They take the rebar, stub it up out of the foundation in, in an accessible location, like in the garage or maybe in the basement in the mechanical room. They put a plaster ring around it to ensure that it remains accessible to satisfy 250.68A and, and this section for that matter. And that's what you would see. Now, can you do that? Absolutely. Has to be continuous or spliced with water. Did I seriously just say spliced with water? So the rebar uh, has to be either continuous or spliced with just the regular tie wires or welding or other. Has to be uh, not exposed to earth without corrosion protection. And then number C is the big one, letter C I should say. And that is that the rebar can no longer be used to interconnect other electrodes. Now, if you've ever taken advantage of that previous allowance, it was a great allowance. Now that's going to be gone. And, and let me show you what I mean with this. Here's, here's an option that we've had for a while that is no longer an option. Let's say you've got a big, you know, wide footprint of a building. We did this at, a, at an IKEA store that, we, uh, that was wired in the area where I inspected. The service equipment was on the southwest corner of the building. And the underground metal water pipe came in on the northeast corner of the building. So we were looking at basically, and, and it's a, it's a uh, what do you call it, a tilt-up building, right? Concrete, uh, precast concrete walls tilt-up. So structural metal wasn't really an option. So what they were looking at doing is having to take like a, a piece of 3 aught copper and going from the southwest corner all the way over to the northwest corner. And this is a 300,000 square foot building. So you're talking, you know, 1,000 feet of, of copper. Instead, what they chose to do is they just took a piece of 3 aught, connected it right to the rebar by the service equipment, and then walked down the building and used the rebar in the footings and foundation as the concrete, as the grounding electrode conductor, right? So they went and walked over and then at the northeast corner of the building, took a little piece of 3 aught, connected to it, and then connected to the water pipe, and that was that. So we only used 10 feet of copper instead of, you know, a thousand feet of copper, and it worked out well. That's no longer an option under the 2020 NEC, and the reason it's no longer an option is that it was never tested this way. You see, when Herbert Eufer was doing his research back in the 1940s about the usefulness of a concrete encased electrode, uh, he never tested the rebar itself as a grounding electrode conductor. He just had the rebar in the footings and foundations, took a four gauge wire to it, connected it, and it was a very useful grounding electrode. But it was never tested to be used in the way that we were doing it to use it as an interconnection point between other electrodes. Now, in my opinion, I think a number four rebar, half inch rebar, is probably significantly better than a piece of four gauge copper as far as conductivity is concerned. Is it as good as a piece of three aught copper? Probably not, if we're being honest, probably not. So if the water pipe required a 3 aught copper, I couldn't use a 3 aught anymore to go to the rebar, use the half-inch rebar, and then jump back to the water pipe. So that is no longer an option under the 2020 NEC.